Hi guys, so Heidi here with The Successful Fashion Designer and this tutorial is gonna show you how to add a neckline embroidery detail to your garment without actually covering up parts of your garment. So let me show you exactly what I mean. This question was submitted by one of you guys in the audience um, and I encourage you to send questions. Either put them in the comments section below or you can email me at hello at soheidi.com and I will get to your questions as the weeks progress. So this question came in from Panchali and her question was, how do I take this embroidery detail and put it on my garment? So in this example, you can see that the embroidery is just a JPEG, all right? I'm gonna zoom in. And so if I'm placing this on my garment, I'm losing parts of my garment because there's this big white box around it. So you can do this one of two ways. The first way I'll show you is specific to Illustrator. Um, and then I'll show you a way you can do it in Photoshop. So you can pick or choose. I would probably do this in Photoshop if it were me, um, but I know some people maybe don't have Photoshop or just really like staying in Illustrator. So we'll do it in Illustrator quickly and I'll show you how you can do it in Photoshop. Your first option is gonna be to create a clipping mask. And what a clipping mask does is it will hide certain portions of the artwork. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a clipping mask to hide the white portions of the artwork and sort of clip out and mask out those parts. And so we can then place it on our garment. So I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna grab my pen tool and I will get a stroke color of yellow, green, it doesn't really matter, anything. And I'm gonna just come around this and I'm, I don't have to be like super specific, but I basically just wanna kind of trace with the pen tool or the pencil tool, whatever tool you wanna draw with. And I, um, again, it depends like how close into your garment you need this to, um, be cropped, but I'm gonna put this around the neckline and I don't, I actually probably don't even need to cut out this portion around the bottom, but I'm just doing it just so we can see. So basically I really, really, really sloppily um, trace around this. With that path selected, now I do wanna tell you one thing about the path that we just drew. That's going to mask out everything that's outside of it. Make sure this is a closed path. So make sure you actually close the path when you're drawing it. With that path selected, I'm gonna hold the shift key. I'm also gonna select the JPEG that is the embroidery. And I'm just gonna come up to object, clipping mask, make. Now a couple things are gonna happen. One is whatever color you use to draw that path, it's gonna to turn to nothing. It'll have no stroke, no fill. And right away, it doesn't really look like much happened, but if we zoom out, and I take this and I place it on top of my garment, you can see that everything that was outside of that shape we masked, we used to mask, is now gone. So I'll just scale this to the size I need it. I'll hold the shift key to do that with the selection tool. And then I can place this on the neckline of my garment and that looks great. So that is one way you can do it. Now let's do this. I'm gonna move this over here and I'm just gonna right click or I can come up to object clipping mask and I'll choose release. And now I've got my original artwork, which is white around the edges. And I've also got this shape that is left over from the mask. I'm just actually gonna delete that for now. Um, so we're gonna do this in Photoshop. So I'm gonna copy this object here. Um, Command or Control C to copy it. And we're just gonna jump over to Photoshop and I'm gonna choose a new document, Command or Control N. By default, the document size will be created the same size of the object that I just copied from Illustrator. So I'll go okay. And it's pretty tiny because we scaled it down. So I'm gonna, when I paste this in here, Command or Control V, we'll see if it's big enough. Now I wanna paste this in just as pixels. Since this was already a pixelated object, I'm just gonna paste this in as pixels and we'll choose okay. And look, it came in really, really bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over to Illustrator and you can see it looks much better in Illustrator, but that's because we scaled it down. So I'm just gonna scale it back up at an arbitrary size and I'll copy it, come back over to Photoshop. I'm gonna close this document and we'll create another one, Command or Control N. Again, you'll notice the width and the height of the document is automatically determined by the size of the object that I just copied, which is that neck embroidery. So I choose OK, and Command or Control V. Again, I wanna paste this as pixels. Now, as we zoom in, we can see our resolution's much better. I'll hit the Return key just to confirm that I'm placing it in the um, document, and now I've got my artwork placed. 
I'm gonna come over to the magic wand tool, okay? If you don't see it's hiding under the quick selection tool, the shortcut is the letter W um, to get either one of these, but the one we specifically want is the magic wand tool. Now there's a couple settings for this that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to. One is up on the top here is this option for contiguous. Now what the magic wand tool does is it will select pixels of similar colors. If I choose contiguous, what it means is it will only select pixels that are contiguous with each other, meaning they are touching each other. So let's zoom in here. And I'm just gonna take the magic wand tool. I've got contiguous selected. I'm gonna click and what it does is it selects all the white pixels around the edges, but it does not select anything in the inside here because those are not contiguous with these ones on the outside. They are not actually touching those. So I'm gonna do Command or Control D to deselect, uncheck contiguous, and now if I click on my artboard or in my document with the magic wand tool, you can see it also selected all of the pixels in these other spots that are not necessarily touching the other white pixels. Okay, the other setting that you can control, I'm gonna do Command or Control D to deselect that, and we'll look at one other setting. That is your tolerance. So this determines how many pixels will or won't be selected. So if you've got artwork that is grayscale and you've got white pixels and really light gray pixels, you're gonna want a really low tolerance. So something like 10. 10 is gonna say, you know what, we're gonna have a very small window of tolerance of what pixels we select. I'm gonna click here and I'm only gonna get pixels that are white or really close to white. So the lower your tolerance, the fewer pixels you'll pick up, the higher tolerance, the more. So you can play around with that setting depending on your artwork. I actually think it looks fine what we got here with the 10 and I do not want contiguous because I wanna make sure to get all these little spots in here. Once I have those all selected, I'm going to simply hit the delete key. Now, doesn't look like anything happened. If you come over to your layers panel, if you don't see it, it's always under window layers. Turn off the background and you can see that we did actually delete all the white space from our artwork. Now, what I currently have selected is everything that's blank, right? Everything that was white. And what I actually wanna select is everything, the exact opposite of that, the inverse of that. So I can come up to select inverse, the shortcut is um, Command Shift I or Control Shift I, depending on whether you're a Mac or a PC. So I will do that, and what it does is it now selected the inverse, meaning it has my entire embroidery pattern selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply copy this, Command or Control C. I'm gonna jump back over to Illustrator and Command or Control V. So I love Illustrator and Photoshop because you can copy and paste back and forth, and now what you can see is we've got our embroidery pattern and the entire thing is see-through, even into these little details and crevices. So I like this solution better because if my garment was colored, let's say it's not white, then the solution that we did earlier with Illustrator where we did the clipping mask, you would still see white in all these little cutout sections. So doing this in Photoshop, you get to cut out all the white and then you have a truly transparent embroidery motif. So for example, if my garment was turquoise or I don't know, whatever color it might be, right? Like maybe um, a beige color, then I can see that through all the embroidery detail and now I've been able to mock that up really easily. Now, one last question that Panchali asked, and we'll jump over to Photoshop again to do this, is how to change colors of the artwork. Okay, so I'm gonna actually deselect what I have selected in here, Commander Control D to deselect that. I make sure I have my the correct layer selected, which is um, the artwork, not the background layer. And I can do a couple things here. I'm just gonna do some really simple color adjustments um, in Photoshop. There's way more complex stuff you can do with this, but I'm just gonna show you a few simple tricks. The first thing I'm gonna come up and do is uh, image adjustments, and you can play with a couple different of these. So you can look at hue and saturation and color balance are probably gonna be the two that you're gonna to wanna to play with the most, but let's just take a look, hue and saturation. Now the first thing you can do is leave this drop down here on master, and you can change the hue all across the board. 
Okay, you can also change your saturation all across the board. If you want to only affect specific colors, you can choose your drop down from here. So let's say I only want to affect the yellow and I want to make it more green. So I'm just going to choose my yellow from the drop down and I can start adjusting these. There we go. And then I want to change the color of the flowers. So I'm going to say that's probably the magenta. I'll select that and I can change the color of those flowers. So depending on how the artwork is broken apart in Photoshop, this technique is going to work better or worse for you, but it's a quick and dirty way to quickly mock up different colors. The other one, again, is under uh, Image Adjustments Color Balance. And again, you can individually balance specific colors within your artwork, okay? So again, this is really just kind of a thing where you're going to play around with this and get the desired result that you want. So once that's done, I'll hit OK. And then again, I can just select everything, Commander Control A, Commander Control C to copy it. So I selected it all. I basically just went up to select all and then edit, copy, Commander Control A, and then Commander Control C, and then jump back over into Illustrator and I'll paste this. And so now you can see we've got a different colorway mocked up of our neck embroidery. So this is great if you get these embroidery details. Um, you know, I know sometimes you're maybe working with ones that are available from your factory or that you've ordered online the patterns for. And so this is a really quick way to mock them up um, without using image trace to convert them to vector or um, having to redraw them completely from scratch. So again, thanks for watching you guys. My name is So Heidi. If you like what I'm doing, please check out my website at SoHeidi.com and sign up for my email list. I send out tons of great content, free tutorials and downloads, stuff that you do not see here on YouTube and I would love to have you. Thank you again so much. If you have any questions, please put them below in the comments or shoot me an email. Talk to you soon, bye-bye.